Hi, I'm Nick Shell with Family Friendly Daddy Blog. Right now you know me as a daddy blogger, a YouTuber. In the near future you'll know me as this guy who's trying to find this guy who's my doppelganger. My episode premieres on the Lifetime Network February 20th. It's called This Time Next Year. You'll see my journey of a year trying to find this guy. Do I find him? You're going to have to watch the show. For today though, I'm no man of 15 minutes of fame. I'm just a guy on the other side of the camera asking you this question. Is it possible that often our cultural identity, our nationality even, overrides our DNA? You know, it's interesting with me, when I took my heritage DNA test, it revealed I've got connections all across the world. You know, uh, I'm 21% Na uh, Native American in Mexico, meaning like Mayan and Aztec, because my grandmother was Mexican. Uh, there, I'm about a third Spanish. I'm about a third German. My mom, on her test, it showed that she's part African and Sephardic Jewish and Middle Eastern. So there's all these things. So as I talk about these things, I'm attracting people from all across the world. They're thinking, wow, I'm distantly related to this American who's like this kaleidoscope of things, right? So it's interesting because I think Culturally, Americans are especially interested in taking these DNA tests because culturally, we're Americans. Especially someone of, of my generation, a millennial, you know, age 36. I'm an American more than I am anything, you know. I can, I can kind of joke that I eat every meal with hot sauce. And I can jokingly say, well, that's because, you know, my grandma's Mexican. But really, no one on the Mexican side even ate spicy food. It was my dad who... He took his test and he's 99% Northwestern European, you know? So uh, I want to attribute these things to my ethnic background, but I don't know that I can. I mean, I made a video too talking about when my mom took her test, it revealed that she's 15% Sephardic Jewish, which we thought was Italian, but apparently it was more so Jewish and Middle Eastern. Well, it turns out though, her father, who was of that side of the family with the Jewish side, he was so good at managing money. He was very serious about not about having a low overhead, paying off your bills, saving your money, investing your money. And he passed it on to my mom, who's passed it on to me. That's a big part of my identity is to outsmart the middle class system that I'm in, that I'm trapped in, pay off this house early, you know, not live with a high overhead. And if I can make it big by doing YouTube videos or whatever it is I can on the side, maybe I can even make more money than even if I did work in an office. I'm always trying to think, how can I get beyond this? And I feel that it goes back to the fact that there is Jewish DNA in me. Now, I'm not saying that if you have Jewish DNA, oh, magically, oh, you're good with money. Not at all. I'm not saying that. I'm saying uh, that through the history of Jewish people, of all they had to, to encounter, through history, they weren't allowed the same rights throughout history. So if you were Jewish, back in Europe, a couple hundred years ago especially, you had to find creative ways to make money and save money. And you had to sort of outsmart the system and think in a whole different way when it came to money. And I think something like that even got passed down. What's funny is I've talked about it in that videos and people have said, you're kind of being stereotypical. Is that kind of racist that you're saying that? And it would be people who weren't Jewish at all that would say that. And then immediately people who actually are Jewish would back me up in the comments and say, no, he's right. And, you know, they said what I just said, that there's a reason people who are Jewish are especially attuned with how to manage and invest money more so than maybe mainstream. There's a reason that stereotype exists, but yet is it a stereotype? Maybe it was a necessary part of Jewish culture, especially throughout the ages. And it trickles down even into people like me. So it's interesting. I can look at parts of my identity and things that I relate to. And I think, okay, that part of me, I could see how I, I could be Jewish there. I can look at this part. I can totally see how I'm Mexican. I, anytime around someone who's Mexican, it's just an instant attraction. Like I just want to go hug them. I feel like they're my cousins. That's always how I feel when I'm around someone who's, who's Mexican. So we can look at all the parts of my DNA and, and ultimately like, okay, I, I have this longing to connect with these people that I'm somehow related to. But ultimately, that is simply DNA. That's not necessarily culture in itself. More than anything, I'm culturally an American. I can never understand life the way someone from Spain does or someone from Europe. I'll never be able to do that. Even if I could go over to 
to Southern Europe or I could hang out in Spain and uh, in Italy and Ma or Macedonia, wherever I am in Europe and I could pass as the locals, I'm never going to think like someone who's Europe. I think like an American because ultimately I'm really starting to be convinced that our culture, who we are culturally and nationally, our, whatever our nationality is, I'm an American nation as far as my nationality goes. My ethnicity, of course, well, Native American, I guess, would be the nationality for American, which technically I kind of am because my grandma was Mexican. 21.6% uh, of me is like basically Mayan and Aztec. So part of me is, but that's not the point. The point is here in America, if you're an American culturally, you think differently than someone in Europe, you know? So it's, so, but yet there's still undeniably going to be some parts of you that because of your DNA, go back to your, the culture and the history of that part of your DNA. And I think it's really interesting. I mean, even here's what inspired this video, by the way. Uh, someone uh, commented on a video I made called DNA test results. How much Jewish DNA do Jewish Americans have? And someone who goes by the name of Mog, or actually Gog Mog, said, I'm ethnically Jewish, but I follow the Christian religion. You know, so that's interesting because like, oh, well, if you're Jewish, like heritage, then in your Jewish DNA, then you practice Judaism. Well, no, a lot of people who are Jewish have a different religion. Maybe they're Catholic, maybe they're Protestant. A Christian so things can still definitely get changed up there so it's interesting I think in the end it's one thing to say take a DNA test and say hey here's my ethnicity but it's a completely other thing to say here's who I am culturally and here's the things that overlap and here's the things that don't so anyway what thoughts do you have on that I think this is very fascinating I've never really given it much thought of how differently how differently a person could be. How different you can be ethnically versus culturally. Whereas someone in Europe could look at me and make some assumptions. Maybe they don't assume I'm American. They, they think that I'm part of, and then they hear me talk and they're like, oh, then he has a different brain than I have. He thinks like an American now that I hear his accent. So it's interesting that we can separate DNA and culture, yet sometimes they're definitely attached to each other. Some, for some people more so than others. So, as I'm saying these things, what's going through your brain? Like, what do you want to throw at me in the comments to add to this? Because this channel is designed around you leaving comments. It's about us keeping a conversation going and sort of learning about each other. Chances are, we're distantly related. And maybe that's why you're even watching this video because you wanted to see someone who is Mexican, American, Sephardic Jewish, Middle Eastern, German, you know, what are these, what thoughts come to mind as I'm saying all this? The concept that our DNA does not necessarily even at all reflect who we are culturally or vice versa. Culture and ethnicity can be, be completely separate or they can be completely the same. You could have been a girl who was born in Korea and adopted by an American in family in, in Missouri and you grew up American but you're you're Asian ethnically or if you had a twin that didn't get adopted and, and they stayed in, back in Asia they're gonna think completely different and have a different culture and so you can have completely different cultures completely different DNA's or they can be one of the same to me this is just fascinating okay now I'm handing the mic to you what do you think about this